Dante is the name in multi-channel audio over ethernet cables and that sort of thing. And there's loads and loads of new devices being Dante enabled every single year. With high channel counts and low latency, it's totally understandable why everyone is going that way. But if you're not really network savvy, then you might have a little trouble understanding it or you might be afraid of how to get into Dante. I'm Andrew, welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm a live sound engineer and I'm gonna take you through setting up a simple Dante network and I'm gonna show you using Dante controller how to configure a Dante enabled stage box to your mixer. And then we'll also take a look at some troubleshooting tips if your Dante network doesn't work as planned. You're going to want to download my free Dante cheat sheet before you watch this video. You can get that at offshoreaudio.no forward slash Dante or in the description down below this video. It's a really simple PDF that's going to just take you through the basic steps of setting up a Dante network and include some of the most important information. So grab that and without further ado, let's dive in. So what is Dante? Put simply, Dante is audio over IP. That is sending audio through computer networks for using sort of cables that we usually use for computer networking. How is that different from other multi-channel audio standards like AES-50 that's used commonly on Midas mixers? Well, the deal with Dante is it understands this concept of IP, right? Without getting too deep into the networking, IP is what allows data, in this case audio, to travel to multiple places in a network. Essentially, it's like an address. Whereas AES-50 is sort of point to point, it's like here's your stage box, here's your mixer. Dante is more like using a mail system. It's saying here's some audio and then the computer program allows you to write an address on that audio and say yeah put that audio from this stage box into that mixer over there. And this ability to travel through networks really makes it super, super flexible. And they say on the website that you can also use existing networking, though most people I see have a dedicated Dante network installed. So let's chat a little bit about the networking then, right? I mentioned IP and I'm not going to get too technical on this because you just want to set up your Dante network, right? You don't want to become a network engineer. So this concept of IP, basically, it's like the address for your computer or for the Dante device or for whatever device on a network. Quite a lot of the time in advanced situations, you see people sending out IP addresses, right? They customize the IP address. This is called a static IP address if you want to look into it further. To get started with Dante, you can use this technology, which is called the DHCP. Long story short, what that does is it just automatically assigns IP addresses to everything that you connect to the network. It means you don't need to think about the IP consequences of things that you're connecting. You can just say, I've got my computer, I've got my mixer, I've got my Dante stage box. When I plug all of these into one network, the network itself and Dante will say, yeah, okay, here are your IP addresses, one, two, three, and it'll keep that all in order for you. The great thing about Dante is it can kind of be two styles of network, right? It can be point to point. That means you can take one channel from your mixer to your stage box, for example, or you can have what's called a star network, which would be that you have a networking switch in the middle that is a sort of hub that you connect all of the devices to in the center of your network, which allows you to connect multiple things together. Most Dante devices have two ports, a primary and a secondary. And so if you're using something like a mixer straight to a stage box, that allows you to run it in a redundant network. Take primary to primary on your stage box between your mixer, and then you do an additional line straight to the stage box and you have two lines of data. If one of them goes down, the other one picks up at once. You might use a star configuration if you have, for example, a stage box, but also wireless microphone receivers that are Dante enabled, playback devices that are Dante enabled, and you want to connect all of it together. Though it is still possible to run a redundant network in this sort of star topology is the word, but star style. If you are running it point to point, that is one cable between the mixer and the stage box or two cables directly between the stage box and the mixer, remember to leave room in your network for connecting Dante controller. That is the software that we'll be running on our computer to configure the Dante network and actually tell the audio where it's supposed to go. The last thing you need to know before we take a look at this software, Dante controller, is that you should be using Cat5e cable or higher, and you should be using no more than 100 meter cable runs. Anything past that point or any lower standard of cable might result in you getting dropouts in the audio network. Let's have a look at how we're gonna set up a simple Dante network then, and we'll have a look at Dante controller and the mixer to make everything play nice together. Get your mixer, laptop, and any Dante-enabled stage racks or stage boxes out. 
turn them on and then connect them all together using Cat5e cable. You can see here that I've connected my laptop to the mixer. The mixer is then connected to my DM0 stage rack and my DM0 stage rack has a Dante card. That Dante card is then connected further to the Dante enabled stage box on the stage. Now we're ready to configure Dante controller. A couple of things I forgot to say when I was recording the Dante controller portion of this video. Name your devices before you start making connections. The name corresponds directly to the device. So if you change the name of the device, it will just make all of the connections that you have made invalid because Dante is looking for the card that you named Mixer, but you've changed it to Mixer 2. And now it's like, where's Mixer? I don't know where Mixer is. And that's because you erased it. So remember to name everything at the start and then don't change the names. So now that you've connected everything up, right, we're gonna open up Dante Controller. It's gonna open on this screen, the routing screen. And you're going to see all of the devices that are connected to this Dante network. Now we wanna have a look at network status because now we get an overview of each individual device that's connected. Latency is looking good and whether there are any errors. So essentially we're looking for green on everything here. Once we've confirmed that everything is connected and everything is looking good, we can head back to the routing screen. This is where we're gonna do most of our work. And so you see we've got receivers and transmitters. And all you need to think about when you're making a connection in Dante is where is that sound coming from, right? Where have you plugged something in? Where is the sound coming from? As in, where is it being transmitted from? These three items here are the three devices that we saw connected on our network status page. And they're the exact same here. All it is is different menus, depending on whether you're sending or receiving the sound. And we'll talk about more of that in a second. What you see here is the first one is the Dante card, right? That is essentially my mixer because I have a Dante card connected to this DLive mixer. The second one is my laptop running Dante Virtual Sound Card. I'm not going to get into Dante Virtual Sound Card. I've done a video on it before. I'll link to it. And the third one is my stage box here. Now remember I talked about how the stage box was labeled with the channels. Now you can see that this is my stage box C channels one to six. I have to ask myself, what do I want to accomplish using Dante Controller today? I think I want to connect the inputs of my stage box into the inputs of my mixer. And if you think about it, right, what we're doing here is we're just simulating plugging a snake into the back of our analog mixer, really, aren't we? Where's the sound coming from? Where is it being transmitted from? It's coming from the stage, from the stage box, right? So we want to expand the stage box out. And you see here the 16 XLR inputs that were on my stage box. I want to ask myself, XLR1 on that stage box, where do I want the other end of that snake to be plugged into? I want to plug it into channel one of my mixer, don't I? So remember I said that Dante card here, this was my mixer. This is the physical card plugged into my mixer. What I do then is I just open up Dante card here and I see that I've got channel one. This is input one on my mixer. I then just find the intersection between input one on the stage box and input one on the mixer. And I click and hourglass appears. And then when it turns green, that means that our connection is made and established. So you can see this essentially when we connect a microphone into the stage box, what it's doing is it's going into the stage box and it is virtually running through the Stanti network down this virtual cable and then into the virtual input on the back of our mixer. It just so happens that all of these connections happen on one network cable instead of a multi-core like they used to. So obviously we want to run our stage box one-to-one, -one, don't we? We want to have input one in our stage box go to one on our mixer and so on and so on up until 16. So we will make all of these connections to our stage box. And it's easy as that. Now we have verified that channels one to 16 on our stage box, which we labeled one to 16, are now going into input one to 16 on this Dante card. Now we're gonna have a look at the mixer to finish that routing. Now we've sent our sound from our stage box to our Dante card. We need to actually finish connecting it to the inputs in the mixer, right? Because the Dante card isn't actually the mixer. We need to get the sound from the Dante card to the input channels on the mixer. And I'm showing you on DLive, but the process is pretty similar on Yamaha consoles or pretty much any other Dante situation you might use. So in a DLive, you go to the IO section. You gotta ask yourself, where is my Dante card located? First of all, we're gonna head to inputs because it's the inputs that we're routing. And then we think, where is the Dante card located? Is it on the surface? It's not, is it? It's not on the back of this mixer here. It's on the mix rack. So we click on the mix rack up here to make sure mix rack is selected. Now on the left here, 
are our input channels. That's the channels of audio that are, that are in the mixer that we can process sound on. This is where we route sound into those channels from the actual XLRs on the mix rack. We might be routing sound from a stage box connected to the DX port here, or this other DX port, but we're not. We're routing for our Dante card, which is connected to our IO port. If you look on the stage rack, on the mix rack, you will see it, the IO port one is the Dante card. So if I click IO port one, you actually see here, mix rack IO port one inputs Dante. 128 of them because that's the Dante card has 120 inputs. The stage box we've connected only has 16. But now all we need to do is we say, okay, we connected stage box one, the XLR on the stage box, XLR one, to input one on the Dante card. That's this one here. And now we want to connect input one on the Dante card to input one on our mixer. So again, we just find the crossover between the two ones that say input one. We hold this patch button and we press just here. And that's us now connected. We've made a full connection. And when we connect a microphone to that stage box, it will go via Dante into the Dante card. And then this mixer will then connect from the Dante card to the input channel on the mixer. And so we can actually just hold this patch button here and do two to two. But if we just drag it out, you'll actually see that we can do all 16 inputs just by dragging like that. And now our stage box is one to one. Okay, so we've routed our inputs, but what about the other way? What about sending the returns, the mixes from our desk, like the monitor mixes or the main left, right? We want to send them back out of the stage box, don't we? So that we connect the outputs of the stage box to amplifiers or monitor wedges and so on and so forth. What we need to do then is we're gonna reset this, right? We're gonna close this side and we're gonna close our receivers as well. And then we need to ask ourselves the question one more time, what is sending the sound? Where is the sound coming from? what is transmitting that sound. And we want that sound to come from the mixer, don't we? We want to send our mix from the mixer to the stage box. So we look at our Dante transmitters and we find our mixer. Remember, Dante card is installed in my mixer. So that's essentially my mixer. And then we expand this transmitter section here. And you can see this is all the available mixes on my mixer. There are a lot of them, but right now we only need to worry about the eight that we have available on that stage box. So we need to ask ourselves where we want these mixes to go. Where do we want the sound from these mixes, these outputs on our mixer, where do we want them to end up, right? What do we want to receive those mixes? And we want our stage box to receive them, don't we? Because we eventually want to collect them from an XLR and connect them to speakers. So what we do is we expand our stage box on the receivers section here. And you will see here are the eight XLR outputs on our Dante stage box. So now it's the same deal. We find number one and we find number one where they cross over and we click and then we make that connection. And we can just continue clicking until we have established again, a one-to-one -one connection. Now we once again need to go back to the mixer to finish setting up this connection. What we want to do now is we want to go over to outputs and we want to ask ourselves again, where do we want these to come out? We want them to come out the Dante stage box, right? But what does that mean? That means we need them to come out of the Dante card and travel via Dante to the stage box. So we'd ask ourselves, where is the Dante card? That's right, it's on the mix rack and it's still an IO port one. Mix rack IO outputs Dante 128, 128. That means I have 128 Dante outputs as well as inputs. These are my mixes on the left here. What I want to do is I want to assign output one in this Dante card, which then goes to output one in the stage box to be mix one. So I just hold that patch button and I press right here. Again, I can just drag these out until I've filled all of my mixes. So these are my monitor mixes. What if I wanted my main left right output to come out of eight and nine, the last two outputs on my Dante stage box? I would just scroll down until I find my main left and right and I would find the point where it intersects with seven and eight on that stage box. And then I would touch here and make that connection. But it gets even better than that, right? Because why limit ourselves to just sending one-to-one -one connections between the stage box and the mixer? What if we wanted to take a split of the channels that we are connecting to the stage box and we wanted to send them to somewhere else? For example, why don't we send them to our computer so that we can do a recording of the show? Same deal, right? Where is the sound coming from? It's coming from the stage box, isn't it? It's being transmitted from the stage box. The microphones are being plugged in at the stage box. So we want to find our stage box and expand that. Where do we want to send that sound to? What part of our signal chain do we want to receive that sound? We want to receive it in our recording device, right? Which is on our computer. So I've got my desktop connection here and I can expand that in the receiver section. So we can select these 16 channels here to go straight into 
the first 16 channels on our recording software. I'm going to skip the first channel because I'm using that currently to record my voice, but I can send channel two into channel two, channel three into channel three, channel four, and so on and so on. And I can record all of the channels for my sound check from multiple places. I could have multiple stage boxes here and I could record all of them to Dante Virtual Sound Card running on my laptop. I'll leave a video how to set up Dante Virtual Sound Card and use it with your laptop. Right, a couple of troubleshooting tips then. Let's say you connect your devices and they aren't turning up on the network. First thing to do, make sure that your cable is connected properly. Take your device closer to your computer running Dante controller and connect it directly with a network cable that you know works. Test that cable, make sure that that device doesn't have a problem talking to the network, and then you can rule that out. Then you need to make sure that you're using Cat5 e cable or higher, and that the distance between the devices is less than 100 meters. Double check as well that your network settings are set to DHCP, that is the automatic sending out of the IP addresses. If you've not done this, you might run into some sort of IP address problem. If things aren't running as planned and you're running your Dante on an existing network with other data going through it, for example, the internet, video signals over the network, that sort of thing, try running a dedicated Dante network. That is just getting another switch or router and putting that beside the existing switcher router and running the Dante cables only into that router. And that router is only for Dante audio cables. If Dante works fine with small channel counts, like 32 channels, but it stops working when you start sending more audio back and forward, for example, 64 channels in, 64 channels out, plus recordings, double check that you have the bandwidth on your cable. Double check the standard of that CAT cable. Of course, make sure that the firmware and the software on all the devices that you're using are up to date. Read the manual and find out how to update software and firmware on devices. Finally, double check your own routing. Go through Dante controller, draw a line between the two devices that you want to connect and make sure that you are lining up where you think you're lining up. Use your troubleshooting knowledge. I'll leave a link to a video about troubleshooting digital mixers. It might be really handy for this, but just follow the signal and logically draw it out. Look at my Dante cheat sheet and say, is my signal making it to the next point? and then test that. I hope this was really, really helpful. I'll leave some videos around about here that will help you with troubleshooting digital mixers, troubleshooting in general, and maybe rooting on DLive mixer if I've made that video yet. If not, something else fantastic. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.